welcome back AutoCAD students and we are in part three of our cabin drawing. In this tutorial we are going to cover how to make a block out of the shower stall that you guys created last week. We are also going to learn how to add some hatch to the drawing and an additional layout tab so that when we're done we have a four sheet set. So let's talk a little bit about blocks and why we would want to make a block. All right, so last week you inserted some blocks that were in this drawing by typing the insert command. So I'm going to go down and just review that. So I'm typing insert on the command line. And if you look here, you have this dialog box and you have three tabs. And right now I'm in the current drawing. Now I had put these blocks in here for you and it was very easy for you to just drag and drop blocks into the drawing, such as this chair, okay? So in order to add another block to this block library, the advantage of doing that will be that you can actually get this block when you're in a different drawing. If you notice here, you have other tabs. So if you started a new drawing and you wanted to grab the uh, shower stall that we're going to make, you would be able to go to other drawing and browse up here and navigate to this particular drawing so that you could get the blocks out of it. So for instance, I'm going to navigate here to this kitchen appliance drawing and you can see that all of the blocks that are in this drawing are here for me to grab. So if I wanted to grab this block, I could just grab it. All right. So this is why we want to add the shower stall that you drew to the current drawings blocks that exist here. So let's make the shower stall that you created last week into a block. All right. So I'm going to come over here and I'm actually going to move this outside of the bathroom for the moment to make it easier to work on. All right, so I'm going to come up to move. I'm going to make a crossing window and move it outside there. All right. Now, before we start, you want to make sure that all of your line work is on layer zero. So I'm going to grip all of this line work come up to the layer pull down and put it on layer zero. Now you may be wondering why does it have to be on layer zero? Well blocks that are created with all of their line work on layer zero when they're inserted into the drawing it's very easy to change their layer and they will take on all of the layer properties so for instance if I were to put this after it's a block on the plumbing fixtures layer it will take on all of the properties, the color gray, the line type, and that type of thing. Um, if you make a block on any other layer other than layer zero, it will keep the layer properties that you created it on. So we want to make sure that this block is on, um, that the line work is on layer zero. All right, now we can make the block. So you can just actually type the word block on the command line. And this is the block definition dialog box. So let's start with the name. So this is going to be a 36 by 36 shower stall. All right. Second thing is to pick the base point. Now the base point is where the cursor is attached to the block or where the grip is. So you want to think about where the base point is. So I'm going to pick this upper left corner as my base point for this block. Now I'm going to come over and select objects. Those are the objects that I want to be the block. When I'm done selecting, I'll do an enter or a right click. And then the last part is you can pick the block's behavior. Uh, if you want the block to scale to the annotative scale, you can do that. Um, you can just have it make sure it scales in the X and Y if you decide to scale it that way or allow exploding. I like to allow exploding because sometimes you need to explode a block and modify it. So let's pick OK. All right. Now, if we go to 
the insert command, let's see if it's part of our library. So I'm going to go to insert and I'm in the current drawing and now here it is, it's part of our library. All right. So you can actually pick it now and bring it into the drawing. And of course you can also now change its layer. So I'm going to put this on the plumbing fixtures layer. This is also the same, a block. We don't really need two, but just to show you that you can grip it and change its layer. All right, I'm going to close this dialog box. And I'm just going to grab it, pick this grip, make it hot, and with my O snaps, I'm going to put it into position. All right, so that is how you create a block and have the block join all the other blocks in this particular drawing. Now we're ready to add some hatch for the tile floor. So if you look over here on the right, this is going to be the objective right here is this particular hatch that has uh, covers the kitchen into the vanity and bathroom area. All right, so before I start, I'm going to make sure that the hatch flooring layer is current. And we need a closed boundary. Uh, for this hatch to flow into. So I need to put some lines where the doorways are. All right, so I'm just going to come up to the line command. I'm going to add a line there, add a line there, and add a line there. Okay, so you can kind of see this is where the hatch will flood. All right, so let's go up to the hatch command. And the hatch we want in this instance is named angle right here. Okay. Uh, it is going to be annotative. So that means that the hatch will scale up to the annotative scale that we have, which is a quarter inch equals a foot. Okay. And your scale is probably at one. So I'll make sure mine is one. Now we just have to pick point. And there you can see the hatch has come in uh, along the boundaries. And I'm noticing that this hatch is a little bit large. So at this point, I'm going to scale it 0.5, which is half size. And that looks good. The next hatch I want to do is this hatch over here, uh, which is going to represent some carpeting. and I don't want to hatch the whole entire room because I don't want to overwhelm the drawing with too much hatch. So what I've done here is I've actually used the spline command to create the boundary and then put the hatch inside it. So let's try that over here. All right, so I'm going to come up to the spline command, which is on the draw panel. And it's this one here on the left. And I'm going to make sure down on my status bar that I don't have ortho or O snaps on because I want my cursor to have lots of freedom to move. So we'll zoom in here. And while in the spline command, I'm just going to pick inside the wall and pick along and then also inside that wall. So that way I know I'll have a closed boundary. All right, let's do it over here. I'm going to right click to restart the spline command right click to end it, right click to restart it again, and right click to end it. Now we're ready to hatch where the carpeting is going to go. So I'm going to come up here to hatch, and the hatch pattern that I want is called cross, so I'll pick on cross. Again, um, this is annotative, and I'm just going to use pick point. So I'll come over to pick point and pick the hatch in these three areas. Now when I look at this, uh, even this hatch, the scale is still a little bit big. So I'm going to come up here to the scale bar and type in 0.25. So it's a quarter of its original size. And I like that. The last thing I need to do is grip the boundary and delete it and grip the spline and delete it.
Now I'm going to put in the leaders. So if we look over here, we have three leaders and they're on a specific layer. Um, and I use the multi-leader command to get those leaders in. So before I actually use the multi-leader command, I just want to show you the multi-leader settings or the multi-leader style. All right, so multi-leaders have a style just like dimensions do. So you can see here, this would be your dimension style and down here is your leader style. So if we pick on the leader styles, you can see I've created a leader style called leader anno and it's annotative. And if you go to modify, uh, what I made sure to do is to make the text style the same as dimensions and uh, the text height the same so that the settings of this particular leader, leader style uh, are consistent with the dimension style. Okay, so now that that leader style uh, is all set, the command to put it in is up here. So this is the difference. This is for the style, this is for the command. So if we come up here to the command, it's basically going to be two picks. and just type in and then I'd like to do control enter to get out of it. Now you can grip this and put it onto the hatch leader layer. That would be the correct layer so now I'm going to make that layer current and I'm going to do one more. So leader command, pick where the arrowhead goes, pick where the landing goes, type control enter. Now let's figure out the area for the ceramic tile so we know how much tile we need to buy. So I'm going to come down to the command line and I'm actually going to type area. And notice on the command line the, we can find out the area by an object. So I'm going to do an enter here to accept that choice. Now it's asking us to select the object. Now with this particular hatch, there is a boundary. So I'm just going to pick on that polyline boundary. And if we look down at the command line, it tells us the area in square inches, also converts it to feet, and the perimeter, which can be helpful. Another way you can use the area command is by actually picking the boundary of the area yourself. So for this room up here that is going to be uh, carpeted, I'm going to type the area command and I'm just going to right away come up and pick each corner of the room. And when I'm done, I'm going to right click and it shows me down here the area for that particular bedroom. And I can do the same with the other bedroom. and then just add the square footage together and I have the total square footage of carpeting that needs to be ordered. Now I'm going to add a multi-line text note with regards to the area of the ceramic tile and the carpeting. I'm going to make sure it stays on the same layer as these leaders. So I have the hatch leader layer current. I'm going to come up to multi-line I'm going to make two picks for the width of the paragraph. So I'm going to have you guys go ahead and fill in the numbers that correspond to the area for the carpeting and the tile. Okay, at this point we are ready to add another layout tab that will show the flooring for this cabin. So before we do that, while we're in model space, we want to make sure that all of these frozen layers that we have, the big snowflakes, are thawed. Now, I could individually pick each one and thaw them, or if you come up here to this icon and just click it, it will thaw every single layer. That, that one sun icon thaws all. Let's make the additional layout tab. All right, so 
I'm going to come down here to my three layout tabs that I have, and I need to just pick on one of them. So I'm actually just going to pick on the electrical one, but you could pick on any layout tab. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to move or copy because I want to copy another layout. So I'm going to pick that. And you want to make sure you check box create a copy. And you can pick the layout that you want the copy to come in before. So I want the copy to come before this furniture layout tab. So let me pick OK there. And you'll see down here that it made the copy right in between these two. Now, um, if that didn't work for you and it ended up in a different position, not a big deal. You can actually move these layout tabs by dragging them to the position that you want. All right, so I'm going to rename this layout tab and I'm going to call it flooring number three and do an enter. Now for the fun part, we get to freeze and thaw the viewport layers that we want to see and the ones that we don't want to see. So I'm going to double click inside the viewport to make model active or make the viewport active and then I'm just going to come up to the layer pull down and thaw the hatch layers that I want to see and freeze the electrical layers that I don't want to see. Now I'm ready to edit the title block. So I just want to make sure that I'm in paper space, which I am, and I'm going to double click on the title block and edit each text field accordingly. At this point, you should notice that you now have four layout tabs. Sheet one is the floor plan. Sheet two is the electrical. Sheet three is the flooring and sheet four is the furniture.